بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد الخاتم النبيين وآله وصحبه أجمعين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وايت طيب so الحمد لله as everyone knows it's not hidden it's a well known fact worldwide everyone is talking about the coronavirus right the virus corona صح the first thing we want to say is that it is a serious thing. Reality is, it's a serious thing. Why is it a serious thing? That was the question. Huh? Because of what reason? Because people can die? I mean, I can die walking across the street. It affects people. I have more, you know, the reality is I'm, I might have more of a chance of getting shot walking in New York City than dying from coronavirus right now. It's not spread like they, people, they make it seem. The reality, it's not spread like they make it seem. They want to cause fear. But it's a serious thing for what reason? We take it serious because it may be a way of Allah sending adab to us. Not because of the corona itself. The reality is that the corona doesn't kill or is not a killer. Allah takes the soul how he wants to take the soul. May it be by the corona, may not be by the corona. As it comes in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, La tira. The Prophet ﷺ said, there's no infectious spreading disease. Meaning that just because of this disease being around, that one person will get it from another person. There's no such thing as this. And there's no bad omens. Like if you see something and you say, oh man, I shouldn't do that. I'm going to change what I was going to do today because I saw this bad evil omen. So something that was famous amongst the Arabs in prehistoric times. And the Prophet said this is Munafi al Tawheed. And this is something that negates the completion of someone's Tawheed. To believe that there is something outside of Allah that can cause and cause death or have an effect on life and death outside of the control of Allah. Does that make sense? Why do we say that? What, what, what part of Tawheed do we see that that, that, that that takes away from? Huh? Tawheed what? What? No. What Tawheed do we see that Allah is the one who controls everything? That he's the giver of life and death? Tawheed what? Arububiyya. That's what Allah's actions, right? So first thing we do is we affirm that nothing happens outside of the control of Allah. If Allah wants us to die, we will die regardless where we are. As Allah he says in the Quran, right? That wherever you are, death will overcome you. Even if you are in fortified castles. If Allah wants it to happen to you, nothing can stop it. So the first thing we do is we start, we remember that we have to put our trust in Allah. First and foremost, nothing can stop anything or make anything happen except by the control and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are more fearful of the coronavirus than they are of Allah, when Allah is the one who causes death. So much so that when the Prophet was asked one time about, well then Ya Rasulullah, how come when some animals become sick, if you put healthy animals with those sick animals, the other animals become sick as well, right? Because they try to say, try to show that there is infectious disease, right? This is what they came to the Prophet and asked him like this. You know what he said? Who infected the first one? Ask yourself that question. Same thing. Who infected the first one? If Allah allowed the first one to be infected, then it's still, remember that, it's Allah who's in control. And if Allah decides to make one of these diseases be a cause for someone to become sick or a cause for someone to die, then again, that's because of Allah doing such, right? The disease has no ability on itself. The same way I have no ability on myself. If Allah gives me the strength to do something, I can do it. If Allah does not give me the strength, I cannot do it. The same thing with the disease. It is a creation, not a creator. It is a cause, not the causer, right? It's a cause from the causes of Allah. Just like cancer, do we say cancer kills? No. No, we say Allah is the one that killed the person, right? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Lillahi ma akhad. To Allah is what He took. Cancer didn't take anything. Tell you, we want to make sure we understand this first part. That our tawheed has to be firm to realize that Allah is the one who does or does not do. Does that make sense? Are we on the same page with that? Our heart has to be firm with this belief. We're not afraid of anything besides Allah because Allah is the one who does it to us or not. 
لو استمع الأمة على أن يضرك بشيء لم يضرك إلا بما كذب الله وعليك. You guys remember the hadith? No. That if the whole nation, the Ummah, were to come together to harm you with something, the whole world, not just a virus, the whole world was to come to harm you with something, they would not be able to harm you except what? If Allah decreed that to happen to you. If Allah decreed that to happen to you. Does that make sense? Yes. But on the same time, we take precautions because we don't know where Allah has decreed our death. So it doesn't mean that that you don't throw yourself into destruction either. Because we don't know where Allah has placed our death at. Or our health. We don't know. So we protect ourselves by the causes, again, that Allah has given us. And we hope that Allah gives the ability in these causes to protect us. Because again, the cause or these protections that we try to use, they have no benefit except if Allah gives benefit to it. وَلَا يَنْتَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا قَدْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكَ Do you guys never memorize this hadith yet? Oh, okay. And nothing will be able to bring, even if the whole ummah was to come to bring you a benefit, no benefit will come to you except if what? Allah. If Allah decreed that to work for you. Where are the Muslims with regards to this thought today? Do we believe these words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We should know that no matter how much hand sanitizer you use, right? If Allah wants you to become sick, you'll be sick. And again, we're not saying don't use the hand sanitizer. The first thing we're saying is correct your belief that everything happens by the will and the permission of Allah. <clears throat> then after that, you utilize the means of protection from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. And the only way, like you said, fulfillru ila Allah. You ever hear this ayah? Fulfillru ila Allah. What does that mean, fulfillru ila Allah? You're running from what Allah has decreed to what Allah has decreed. Right? So you're running from Allah has decreed something for you and you're going to the protection of Allah which Allah has decreed for you. We have to remember it's by the decree of Allah. So the first thing that we have to remember is to ask Allah. So what I have here today, inshallah, is a book. A book written by a Shaykh Abdul Razak Ibn Abdul Muhsin Al Abad Al Badr, Hafidullah Ta'ala, where he compiled really short. عشر وصايا للوقاية من الوباء. Ten advices that a person should use. Pay attention to these ten advices that a person should use to do what? To protect themselves from pandemics. You know the spread of these type of things. I want to tell you something quick too, inshallah. Pay attention to this really important thing. What has ever? What do you guys notice the most about what's happening right now? Have you really seen sick people? Have any of you seen anyone sick yet? No, alhamdulillah. No, right? But what have you have? What have you seen? Just scared sick. people. Yeah. Not sick people, but you see a lot of scared people, right? This is one of the effects of what the people want to cause. So us as Muslims with our tawheed, we remain strong and firm, right? As Allah says, "Kul inna al-mawta ladi tafiruna minhu, fa inna hu walaqikum." That death that you're running from, no matter how far you run, eventually it's going to meet you. They know who people. That's just the reality. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. So the thing that we should be focused on is trying to clean up our act. So why do we say it's serious? There's a hadith where one time the Prophet he was sitting with Aisha radiallahu anha. And he started to see rain clouds coming. So rain clouds in the desert is a beautiful thing. You know why? They don't get a lot of water. So when you see rain clouds in the desert, people become happy. Water is coming, right? So the Prophet saw some sort of rain clouds and his face changed. So Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, why do you look, why are you look nervous and scared? People see rain clouds and they normally look happy. Why do you look scared? He said, perhaps the punishment of Allah is coming in those clouds. So when we see these type of things, it should make us want to turn back to Allah more. Because for the believers, the reason for them to turn back to Allah for the kafir is a punishment. It's reality. For the kafir, it's a punishment. For the believer, it's a reason for them to turn back to Allah and become more serious about their relationship with Allah. To leave off disobedience to Allah. They say the worst person is the one who, in a time of fitting, in a time of a trial, 
a time of a tribulation, they become more disobedient. They stay disobedient. They don't change. They don't stop doing the sins. It's a difficulty happening in front of them. They see the punishment of Allah in front of them. And instead, they sin and disobey Allah. Instead, they sin and disobey Allah. So may Allah protect us from that. That's what we need to make dua. May Allah protect us from having hard hearts where we don't we see the punishment of Allah and it doesn't change us in our action. May Allah protect us from that. May Allah protect us from not taking it serious enough to make tawbah to Allah and ask Allah to forgive us for our sins before he decides to punish us. So here, I want to mention some of these advices that the Shaykh he gave. Summarize them, inshallah. We're not going to read the book word for word. We're going to summarize the book, inshallah. He says in the beginning, he says, Alhamdulillah, يوجب المطرة إذا دعاهم ويغيط المالهوث إذا ناداهم ويكشف السوء ويفضط الكربات لا لا تحي القلوب إلا بذكره ولا يقع عمر إلا بإذنه He mentions and begins by starting to, and showing again that everything happens by the permission of Allah. Allah, there's no hardship that's removed except by the command of Allah. There's no difficulty that's opened up except by Allah's mercy. And reminding us again that what? If we want help and safety from this, the first thing we have to do is turn back to Allah. Right? There's no safety. There's no help. There's no deliverance except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That has to be very clear. And again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslims and the lands of the Muslims from this disease. And may Allah protect us here, even though we're amongst the kuffar, may Allah protect us from receiving a punishment that Allah may decide to give to the kuffar. May Allah protect us from that punishment. Amen. And that's the reality. And that's one of the things that you remember. You should take this as a, a reminder from living in the lands of the kuffar. That when Allah Ta'ala, he decides to destroy the kuffar, destroys whoever is in that land. And then later on, maybe he will raise the people up by their niya, right? The Muslims, there were, there were some Muslims there. But if the adab comes, it comes and it goes, it destroys everyone. That's one of the benefits of living where the people are righteous, where the people are upon tawheed and the sunnah. Because when the adab comes, Allah will protect that land. Because the people are enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. But when we live in a land, as we're going to see here, and the book is going to come. If we live in a land where nobody enjoys the good and forbids the evil, then the punishment comes and destroys all of them. Right? Yeah. Have you heard the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned about when, the, when Allah ordered the angels to destroy a place, and the angels went to go destroy that place, and they came back to Allah and said, Oh Allah, but such and such is a righteous man that lives there. Yeah. Right? Yes. You heard this hadith before? Yes, yeah. No? They said, There's a righteous man that lives there. What did Allah tell him to do? Yeah, I just said. No, no, no. What did Allah tell him to do? Destroy him first. Why? He does not the Amr ibn Malik. He what? He didn't deserve the Allah? Yeah. 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 No. Why? Anybody else know why? So he doesn't what? So he doesn't what? Say it. So he doesn't suffer? No. He shouldn't have been there? Partly. He said because he didn't enjoy the good and forbid the evil on them. Destroy him first. So think about our situation here in America. How many of us are enjoying the good and forbidding the evil? Or are we just comfortable? Chilling. I'm here. Punish might come, might come to us first. Because we're relaxed and chilling in the lands of the Kufar. Evil all around us. People, you know, committing zina, drinking the alcohol. Gay people, all, you know, all the type of sins and disease, stuff that's here. And what are we doing? We're just chilling. We're just here. Maybe it might come to us first. May Allah protect us from that reality and wake us up from the reality of these type of punishments. We're worried about the, the, the microbes. We should be worried about Allah's punishment. That's the reality of the punishment of Allah. 
But the ones who don't enjoy the good and forbid the evil, but they know about it, the Muslims, you Muslim, me Muslim, and we don't enjoy the good and forbid the evil, then Allah may destroy us first. May Allah protect us from that. May Allah protect us from that. That's more fearful to me than the coronavirus. That Allah may decide to destroy me first because I live here in the lands of the Kufar, and what am I really doing in regards to enjoying the good and forbidding the evil to them? That's more fearful because I know for sure that can happen. I don't believe with surety that I can get the coronavirus. Maybe, maybe not. But I know for sure Allah can destroy me. Right? Yes. Is that true or am I? True. What is more likely to happen? I know I'm going to die. Okay. Right? Have any of you been promised to live forever? So you know for sure you're going to die, right? But have you been promised to get coronavirus? So for sure you're going to die. What should you really be preparing for? Instead of washing up your hands every five times for fear of coronavirus, you should be making toba. That's more sure to happen, right? You should be making toba. Making wudu to make some extra salawat or something. Yes, again, for clear, but again, what's the real reality? Do we really understand the real reality of what's going on? Allah may kill Khadr first. Just get rid of him. He's useless. And Lanza Kufar, chilling, eating donuts, you know? Go to the yeah, I'm you, we're eating donuts, we're chilling. Allah may destroy us first, it's reality. So again, may Allah protect us from that. May Allah make us more active in protecting ourselves from his punishment, more than we're active in protecting ourselves from this virus. This is a real wake-up call to us. If you see how people are mobilizing to protect themselves from this virus, who mobilizes like this to protect themselves from the anger of Allah? Nobody see anybody do that? Let's all get together and wash our hands and make we'll do it. That makes a lot. You don't see people doing that. Everyone is, you know, covering their face. You know, you got people covering their face, scared of wearing the cop before. Right? Now you got people wearing masks outside. Even Muslims. But they were scared of wearing the cop. Oh, well, they're gonna look at me and point at me, but they wear a mask. Well, where's our iman at? What are we really about? People wear masks, Muslims even now, wearing masks, right? They were scared before to wear their cob, said, no, people are going to laugh at me if I wear their cob outside, bother me. But now they're walking around with ugly blue masks on their face. What are we really about? So think about that part more than you think about the germ and the virus. Not to say the germ and the virus is not real, but what is closer to happening? What is more likely to happen to you? Allah taking your life at any time or you getting the coronavirus. And then you have to meet Allah. What are you going to tell Allah? Have you prepared that yet? What are you going to tell Allah? When you meet Allah and he asks you, you know, what did you do? You had Islam, what did you do? Allah mahfadna bi Islam al-Qa'imin. Allah mahfadna bi Islam al-Wahideen. And that's the reality. Maybe Allah will save us because some people are really, you know, have Islam and some people are really have Tawheed and Allah will save us by, you know, their da'wah and stuff. And we ask Allah to help us. So the first thing the Shaykh he mentions in regards to pay attention, because I'm not going to write, I'll write it on the board. I'll give you some setup. Right? I wasn't going to write it on the board, but I will. The first thing he says, what should you do to protect yourself before a virus, before these epidemics or pandemics, whatever they want to call it, even come? What should be the first thing? What should have been our practice even before this? What should we have been doing? Nizafa. Keep the nizafa. Well, yeah, the nizafa. But first, they can dua. The Prophet ﷺ said that, you know, making this dua, like, Bismillah al Bismillah al La لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في شيء في السماوات والأرض في الأرض في الأرض وفلا في الأرض ولا في السماء في الأرض ولا في السماء 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 وهو هو السميع العليم Okay, this is what we should be saying how many times a day? 
Nope, you're wrong. How many times a day? Nope, you're wrong. How many times a day? Six times. Six times a day. Three times in the morning, three times at night. How many times a day? Six times. That's our medicine always, every day. We should be doing this, right? Bismillah illa dila yaduru ma'asmi shayun fil aruhu la fil sama wa huwa fis wa huwa sami'u alim. Bismillah illa dila yaduru ma'asmi shayun fil aruhu la fil sama wa huwa sami'u alim. Who doesn't know it? Today you're gonna memorize it, right? If you don't know it, you're gonna memorize it. Bismillah illa dila yaduru ma'asmi shayun fil aruhu la fil sama wa huwa sami'u alim. Bismillah illa dila yaduru ma'asmi shayun. Here's a question. Does this work? Question. Does this work? Yeah, sure. You sure you guys don't sound positive? Sure. If it worked, how many of you said it this morning? How many of you use hand sanitizer this morning, though? No. Anybody use hand sanitizer today? Not yet? Okay. But you got plans. Maybe that's in your pocket, right? There's no hand sanitizer. No hand sanitizer? No. This is your hand sanitizer, then. Right? Three times in the morning, three times at night. Bismillah illadhi la yaduru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama wa huwa sami'u al-alim. What's the benefit of this? What does it mean? Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yaduru ma'asmihi. In the name of Allah, the one who nothing, la yaduru ma'asmihi, that nothing, if you say his name, with the presence of his name, ma'asmihi, shay'un fil ardi, nothing can harm. Nothing, no harm takes effect with the presence of Allah's name. Fill all of the the samat in the heavens or in the earth. And he is the all hearing, the all knowing. What's the beauty of those two names at the end of this dua? What's the beauty of those two names at the end of this dua? What is the beauty of it though? Yeah, you, 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 know, you know the Asma of Allah. What's the beauty of those two names here? What's the beauty? What's the beauty? Come on, subhanAllah. What's the beauty of these things here? What does Samir mean? Yeah. He hears what? Everything. He hears your dua, but also what do we say it means? Remember the dua of Maryam. What do we say Samir means? The one who responds. The one who responds. Jazakum khairan. The one who responds. And he is al Ali. What does Ali mean? Oh, no. No, sorry. So that means every disease, sickness, or bad, virus, corona, everything. Allah knows about it already. It's not going to, you know, it's not escaping Allah. So Allah knows about it. He's the one that can protect you from it. This is the number one precaution we should be taking. If you have faith in anything, have faith in this dua. More than washing your hands. More than hand sanitizer. This is the number one precaution a Muslim's heart should be relying on. Then you can do whatever else you want. But if you don't do this, where is your aqidah? Where is your iman in Allah if you don't take this to be your number one precaution? Not to say you're not taking other precautions, but this should be number one, numero uno. Right? Whoever says this, the Prophet said that nothing will harm him. Nothing will unexpectedly come to him to harm him in that day, or if he says it at night, at that night. It won't come and harm him. You're good. Okay? So much so that the narrator of this hadith, his name was Aban. He was the son of Uthman ibn Affan, right? He, and Uthman ibn Affan narrated this hadith. So Aban, he came one time and he got stung by a, a scorpion or something like this, right? Uh, he became paralyzed. So the people came and they came and started looking at him like, yo, what happened to you? Wasn't you the one who narrated that hadith, right? So Aban said, yo, Allah, my father didn't lie and I didn't lie. He said, but I didn't make that dua that day. I was angry, and I didn't make that du'a that day. Look what happened to me. So we protect ourselves with this du'a that Allah will protect us. But that's before it comes. So you should be saying it before that comes to you. We got that? Do I need to keep this on the board? Does everyone have this du'a? Know this du'a? You know it? MashaAllah, young people. MashaAllah, barakallahu feekum. Let me hear everyone say it though. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now I'm going to tell you another dua. Huh? I can't hear you. Say it again. What? 
Oh, the first advice is to make this dua? Yes, that's the first advice. Number one, the first advice that he gave was to make this dua before you actually get anything. That's a precautionary dua thing. That before you even get any type of, you know, hardship comes to you, the first thing is to be constant upon making this dua. Three times in the morning, three times in the evening. Okay? The second thing, the second thing is to be constant upon making the dua where the prophet, the, the prophet, tell me what prophet said this. La ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu min al What prophet said that? That's very smart people here. Huh? Bun Nun, right? Yunus. Yunus. So, la la ilaha ant Okay, La ilaha illa ad subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Allah Ta'ala in the Quran, with the noon, if they have a Mughadiban, for Banna Allah Nakhdra Alehi, for Nada, for Zulumati, and La ilaha illa ad subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimin. But the Jabna Allah, when a Jay, when a Jay Nahu min al-Gham, or Kadarik Nunji, and Mu'minin. Allah Ta'ala, he mentions that, you know, with the noon, that noon is another name of Yunus, uh, of Yunus, right? Prophet Yunus. That when he when he left and he was angry from his people, for and he thought that, you know, and Fanada I can't think of a way to translate this properly right now. So I'm skipping this part. Fanada Fizulumati and La ilaha illa ant. Subhanaka in kuntum in any kuntum in a volumeen. Does someone have a, um, a translation of the Quran? Who? Do you have one? You cannot see the tafsir. Yeah, it's probably the tafsir, you're right. No, I know what he means, but it doesn't, you don't translate it that way in regards to a prophet. A prophet knows for sure that Allah can take control of him. So I'm thinking of the proper way to translate it, the problem. Not the linguistic meaning, but what is the way to translate it, is what I'm... Huh? It's ayat number uh, 88 from Surah Al-Anbiya. What, what translation are you looking at? Here we go here. Yeah, that's good. Eighty-eight, Surah Anbiya, ayat eighty-eight. Yeah, eighty-eight. We'll go to eighty-seven. What's up, sir? What, what translation is this? Sahih International? That's a good one. Let me see. No. So. Anyway, we'll come back. I still want to look at something a little different. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to use that translation either. Anyway, so that's not the point anyway. The point is in regards to the dua. So he made the dua, La ilaha illa ant, subhanaka inni kuntum min al that there's nothing that deserves to be worse except for you, how perfect you are in me, and I was from amongst the wrongdoers. And Allah says, so we responded to him, and we saved him from the distress that he was in. So this dua is something that we should say whenever we're in a very tight, distressful situation. When he called out, La ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntum min al Indeed, I was from amongst the wrongdoers, praising Allah, showing that Allah is the only one who should be worshipped, and showing that he was wrong. And that's what we should do. 
La ilaha kuntu min al-dhal, inni kuntu min al So you call out with this, that I was from amongst the wrongdoers. There comes in another hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Ya'ti alaykum zaman la yanju fi illa man da'a dua al gharib That there's going to come a time where no, nothing will save you except the dua of the gharib, of the one who was drowning. He's talking about the noon, Yunus. And that dua is what? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al the Prophet said, there's going to come a time where nothing is going to save you except this dua. Why? This is the dua of the one who's in distress. They're in a hardship. They're in a situation where the only, only thing they can do is call out to Allah. Nothing can save me except you, O oh Allah. He, he was in the body of a fish. What else could save you at that time? Nobody's going to come and get him. Right? Can't call him. The only, the only one who can save you is Allah. And that's how we should be when we, we call out to Allah. Is that we're asking, oh Allah, you save me. Save me, oh Allah. So if a person was to get into a situation, this is what they do. al Hafiz ibn Kathir, he said that, that this is what Allah does to the believers. And that's how we save the believers. He said this is especially when the believers are in a bad situation. Allah said, if they call out to me, turn it back to me, then I will save them. So we ask Allah to save us, protect us. So the second thing is what? To make this dua. This is number two. This is number two. Number two is to say this dua a lot. To make this dua. Does everyone know this dua? Good, mashallah. Allah, the Prophet says in another narration that da'wah to the noon is that the wa huwa fi batn al that the supplication of the noon that he called out to Allah when he was in the belly of the fish lam yad'u biha rajulun fi shay'in qatun illa istajab Allah lahu that nobody calls out with this dua except that Allah will save them he will respond to them Nobody calls out to Allah believing in it, right? With certainty, except that Allah will save them. So that's number? Number two. As well as Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, pay attention to this. He says, فَمَا دُوفِي عَدْ شَدَاءِ لِلدُّنْيَا بِمِثْلِ التَّوْحِيدِ وَلِذَلِكَ كَانَ دُعَاءِ الْكَرْبِ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ وَدَعْبَةُ الدِّنُّونِ أَلَّتِي مَا دَعَى بِهَا الْمَكْرُوبٌ إِلَّا فَرَّجَ اللَّهُ كَرْبَةُ بِالتَّوْحِيد that Tawheed, what's Tawheed? What's Tawheed? Ya Rabbil Alameen. What is Tawheed? Uluhiya Rubi Asma wa Sifat. What is it? Singing out Allah alone, right? What is it? Giving Allah his rights that belongs only to Allah. What is Tawheed, right? So Tawheed, we talk about here is the Tawheed that you're putting your trust in Allah alone. You're worshiping Allah alone. You realize the Allah's actions. He's the only one who can do and stop anything from happening. So safety and security belongs to the people of who? Tawheed. The people who have this belief that only Allah can do. And Allah's fa'alun lima yurid. Allah is the one who does whatever he wants. And there's no one who can stop Allah. And they have this belief in their heart. Safety and security and rescue comes through Tawheed. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this dua that Dunun says more than anything else because that is the dua that calls out with Tawheed. Do we understand that? Tawheed will save you. So when you see us now, you hear us talking about Tawheed, 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 Tawheed. You wonder why. Why? Because safety is in Tawheed. Huh? No, that's still part of two. That safety comes through Tawheed and every destruction and every harm comes through shirk. Through worshiping other than Allah, believing in other than Allah, thinking that other than Allah can harm you or have an effect on you. All harm comes through that. That's why you see the kuffar are the scaredest people when it comes to these things. And a Muslim should not be like that if they have tawheed. Because they realize that if it's going to come, it's going to come. And it's only by the permission of Allah that it comes. Is that correct? Is that correct? Number three is to seek refuge from severe calamities. Seek refuge from severe calamities. Number three is to seek refuge from severe calamities. That we should be making dua for this. Again, 
seeking refuge. So niggas do out for a lot of savings and also seeking refuge to out wolf, seeking refuge in Allah from these. That remember again that the only way for safety is through Allah giving safety. Through Allah giving the safety. So number three is what? Seeking refuge from severe calamities. As it comes in the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek refuge from four things. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتعوذ من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة الأعداء. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to seek refuge from severe calamities, from miserableness, from being, you know, uh, you know, uh, now nah, miserableness. Yeah. Fresh, no seven things. From bad qadha, a bad decree from Allah, and from the enemies becoming happy with your, with your losses. That's another thing that Muslims have to remember. Never give your enemies a time to make shanata about you. Like, you know, your enemies see you arguing. Your enemies see you, you know, dis- uh, 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 um, what's it, despair. Now you're running and trying to figure out what to do. The Muslim shows up and stands up strong, especially when his enemies are watching, right? Never give the chance of your enemies to be happy with something that's happening to you. So we seek refuge from. from give, don't let, never give your enemies a chance to see you. Um, you know how they say, like, don't let them see you down? Especially don't let your enemies see you down. Because they see you down, it makes them happy. When your enemies see you down, that makes them happy, right? Shamat al adai Like, it's, that's what it means. It means, like, to give your enemy something to be happy about, about your misfortune. So when you go through something, don't show it. If you're going through something, right, don't show it so your enemies can have a chance to be happy and brag about your loss, your misfortune. Number four, Number four is al muhafadatu ala dua al khuruji min al manzil. Being constant in preserving and reciting the dua when you leave your home. Being constant in reciting the dua when you leave your home. Is everybody know the dua when you leave your home? What is it? Huh? MashaAllah, MashaAllah, very good, very good, very good. Be constant in this. Why? The Prophet says, "Sallam says, 'Ida kharaj al-wajl min baytihi, faqal Bismillah, Bismillah, tawakkal tu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwa illa billah. Qal yuqal hina idin hudid wa kufid wa buqid, fatanajja Allah, fatanajja lahu al-shayatin, fa yaqul lahu al-shaytan al-akhir, kifa laka bi rajul al-qad hudiya wa kufiya wa buqiya." The Prophet said, Sallam, he said, when a person leaves the he leaves his home and he says Bismillah to a counter ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. When he says this dua, it is responded for to him at that time. You will be guided, he is guided, he will be sufficed, and he will be what? Protected. And he will be what? Protected. So the shayateen will say to the other shayateen at that time, what are you going to do with someone who's been guided, sufficed, and protected? So imagine you go out this house and the corona is coming looking for you, right? <laughs> They're well protected, right? And the corona is looking. And you came out your house and you said, Bismillah to a kentu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And you're protected. And you touch the hand of 15 people that have corona. And you never get it. It's the mercy of Allah. Again, we're not telling you to go do this, right? Say the precaution, don't be foolish. But this is how Allah protects his servants. Allah said, you're protected. Believe that in your heart. Look what you said. There's no might or power. Nothing can happen except by the permission of Allah. You're protected. You're protected. If you say this to Allah, may Allah protect us and guide us to say these ad'iyah at their proper times. Another, the number, that was number four. That was number four. What's number five? 
Good. I'm just making sure we're still awake. We're still awake, right? What's number four? Oh, whoa, whoa, I'm talking to one person. What's number four? No, see? You're not even here. You're not even here. You left. So, number five is Su'al Allah al Afia in the Sabah wal Masa. Number five is to ask Allah for Afia, to ask Allah for well being in the morning and at night. As the Prophet said, he said, Lem Yakun Rasulullah says, Some Yadah Uha Ula Dawati Hina Yusbiha Wahina Yumsi. The Prophet Sallam never left off reciting these da'awat, these supplications in the morning and the evening. Which one is he talking about? Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyah fi dunya wal akhirah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afu wa al-afiyah fi deeni wa dunya wa ahli wa mali. Allahumma astu'a awrati wa amin ru'ati. Allahumma ahfidni min bayni yadayi wa min khalfi wa an yameeni wa an shimali wa min fawki wa a'udhu bi azamati an u'tala min tahti. The Prophet Sallallahu will never leave off saying this dua. What does it mean? Oh Allah, inni as'aluka. Oh Allah, I ask you for afiyah, fi dunya wal akhirah. For afiyah in the dunya and the akhirah. Afiyah is well-being, safety, security. All that's afiyah. I'm asking you for safety, well-being, good health, security. In my dunya, in this life, and in the akhirah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afu wa al-afiyah fi deen wa dunya. Oh Allah, I'm asking for your safety and well-being in my dunya, in my deen, and in my dunya, in my family, and in my wealth. Allahumma store awrat. Oh Allah, cover my awrah. They say it can mean two things. Oh Allah, keep me. You know, we said it can mean two things. Or Allah says it can mean two things. One, Allah, don't show my, you know, my aims, my mistakes, my things of this nature that I don't want people to know about. Also, it means, oh Allah, keep my actual awrah covered. This is important for the du- for the women to think about this and for the men today. Because men today are very lax in regards to their awrah being covered. Huh? Men walk around these tight pants with their awrah not being covered properly. They should be making Allah this dua, Allah must store awrati. The women should be careful of it too. How many women do we see may Allah guide them and protect them and they walk around and they show their ankles? Is this not a part of her awrah? How many women are very lackadaisical in regards to their sleeves coming up like this? Is this not a part of her aura? How many women are very lackadaisical with her ears showing, her neck showing? They wear the hijab and they throw it around and sometimes it's not on. And their neck is showing. And their ears are showing. Is this not a part of her aura? So why do, we, why do they show it? Why are they lackadaisical and lazy with that? Shouldn't they be more worried about protecting that, like the hand sanitizer? But they're easy with that. They throw their hijab. It's not even a hijab. They throw that scarf thing around. It's not a hijab. They throw that thing around like this. Sometimes their neck is showing. We're not even talking about the face or the hands right now. We're not even going to get into the ikhtilaf. We're talking about what everybody agrees upon, that you can't show anything except for the face and the hands, right? But some of the women, they show their ears. They want to show their earrings. They show their, their wrists. Sometimes they pull their sleeves up like this. Right? Am I right? Sometimes they wear dresses that come up to here. They got a dress on. You guys see what I'm saying? The lady got a dress on that, that, that comes up to right here. How is that? That's her aura. She's not supposed to show that to any man. But they do it like it's nothing. They got on, they, they got on like, like the man wears a, a fold above his ankle. The woman got her... Her just bow above her ankles. That's her aura. It is haram. That is her private parts that no one is supposed to see. Why are women easy with this? Like it's little thing. Or even worse, for Yadam and Laugh, the women they wear these tight dresses, right? You know what I'm talking about. They wear those dresses and they think they have. What is that? That's not a hijab. It's worse than um, pants. Well, Lord, I'm not, it's not, you know it's what I'm talking about. They go outside and they have on a little old hijab and they have on a tight, whatever skirt they have. I don't know what it's called, but it's foolishness. What's it called? I don't know what it's called. No, I don't think it's a skirt. It's some t- something else. I don't know what it is. A tight skirt or something. But they wear it and it comes and they have like a hoodie on and then the rest is like, what is that? Spandex skirt? Wait, well, no, serious. That's not hijab. That is haram. That woman is the one. That, that's the description that the Prophet Sallam gave when he said that she's adiyat kasiyat. She has clothes on, but she's naked. 
that she will not smell the scent of Jannah. You guys think it's a joke. The prophet said this woman will not smell the scent of Jannah. She's naked with clothes on. She has on a skirt and she goes out. She says, I have a skirt and I'm a good Muslim, but the skirt is skin tight. Everything in the world is seen to everybody. It is haram. It's the worst type of haram. It is from the major sins. It's from the what? The major sin. It's not a minor deal. Why do we know it's a major sin? Because a punishment has been attached to it. She won't be, she won't smell the scent of Jannah. Is that like a little thing to y'all? May Allah guide them and guide us and protect the Muslim women, protect the awrats of the Muslim women. So they don't stop thinking that this is okay, it's disgusting, and it's not halal. From the shoulder of the ankle to the tight dress to the, to the, to the hoodies, whatever, that they showing us tight like this and whatever. All of that is game. Y'all playing games like Yahud. That is not hijab. You are not covered. That is not what Allah has prescribed. I don't know who told you that was halal, but it wasn't Allah and his messenger. So, again, this dua is important. Allahumma stir awrati. Oh Allah, cover our awrat. Let us not show what we shouldn't be showing. Wa amin ro'ati. And give us safety from our ro'at. Our ro'at are those things that frighten us. Should we not be saying this today? People are frightened. How many people know this dua? Wa amin ro'ati. People are frightened by this coronavirus. Oh Allah, give us safety from those things that frighten us. Allahumma hafadni min bayni yaday. Oh Allah, protect me from that which is in front of me. Wa min khalfi, from that which is behind me. Wa an yamini, from that which is on the right of me. Wa an shimali, that which is on the left of me. Wa min fawki, that which is below me. Wa a'udhu bi azamatik an ukhtala wa an min tahti. And I ask you, oh Allah, to protect me from being swallowed up from beneath me. An ukhtala min tahti. From being swallowed up from beneath. This is a great dua. Do you know it? Learn it. It's from the duas that are said in the morning and the evening. It's too much around the board. <laughs> but learn it. Alright? Learn it. And you can find this dua easily in Hasmul Muslim. It's in the section of the morning and evening du'as. And Hasmul Muslim is right there. Tell you? So that was number five. Especially during this time, everybody should try to wear niqab. It's just a freebie. Nobody's going to stop you now. Nobody's going to say anything. You say, oh, I'm wearing it, you know. Take the freebies and may Allah decrease you upon ta'ah and obedience. Everybody go outside with a niqab. I was gonna wear a imam, but you know. I'm just saying, it's a freebie. Why not take that opportunity? Nobody's gonna say nothing to you now. They're gonna say, oh, mashallah, she's smart. And you're doing it for the sake of Allah. But use the opportunity. And they keep doing it after. They say, I don't, uh, and when they say, oh, Corona is done, say, no, I don't trust you guys. I'm gonna keep wearing it forever. Right? I'm always worried about the. Anyway, number six, Kathra to dua. Making dua a lot, period. Making regular du'a, period. Making du'a. Du'a, period. Open du'a, any du'a. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَنْ فُوتِحَ لَهُ مِنْكُمْ بَابَ الدُّعَا فُوتِحَتْ لَهُ أَبْوَابُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَمَا سُئِلَ اللَّهُ الشَّيْءٍ يَعْنِي أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مَنْ أَنْ يَسْأَلَ الْعَافِيَةِ أَنْ يُسْأَلَ الْعَافِيَةِ The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever the door to du'a is opened up for them, whoever the door to du'a, making a lot of du'a is opened up for them, then they have been opened up for them the door to rahmah, to mercy. And Allah is not asked about anything that he loves more than a person asking him for afiyah. So we should ask Allah, Allah for afiyah. Allah minna nasaluk al-afiyah. Allah minna nasaluk al-afiyah. Allah minna nasaluk al-afiyah. Allah minna nasaluk al-afiyah. Allah loves to be asked for afiyah. And we should always ask Allah for afiyah. So much so of the scholars, they say, don't ask Allah to be patient. Because if you ask Allah to be patient, he's going to give you something to make you be patient. You don't want that. Ask Allah for afiyah. Oh Allah, give me afiyah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka afiyah. Wa alaykum as-salamu alaykum. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afiyah. As well, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, inna dua yanfa'u mimma nazila wa mimma lam yanzil. Fa'alaykum ibadallahi bid dua. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, dua, it benefits you from that which has come down and that which hasn't come down from trials and tribulations. So it's a must for you, ibadallah, to make a lot of dua. It's a must for you to make a lot of dua. Make dua, please. Make dua. That was number six. 
Make a lot of dua. What was number six? Number seven. Don't go to places where you know that the pandemic or the disease has spread. That's obvious, right? If you know that there's disease in a place, stay away from there, right? Stay away from the places where disease is known to be. If you know there's disease in a place, don't go there. If you know a person has a disease, stay away from them. Similarly, if a person knows they're sick, don't come around the healthy people. Don't come and try to spread the disease. We see in videos where Iyad bin Allah, may Allah destroy these people. We see in videos of people doing evil stuff. The shayateen. Sneezing on stuff. Taking their fingers in their mouth and touching stuff on purpose. They even said this basketball player, what is this guy's name? Huh? Rudy what? Gobert? Whatever this guy's name, right? They said this guy was going around the locker room kissing stuff and licking stuff. To get people sick, yeah. This is a fact. They said that he got sick and was going around the locker room licking stuff and touching it. And then his teammate got sick because of him. That's why they closed the NBA down. You see how evil and disgusting the Kufar Khabib. These people are filthy. And you look up to them. He might have been one of your favorite players before. One of you guys might have wanted to be like him. Khabib, filthy guy. How do you do this? What type of person does that? That you're sick, and instead of trying to protect people from your sickness, you're going around trying to spread it. Uh, uh, whatever. No. That's what he did. Shows you the ways of these people. He took it lightly like it was a joke, and his teammate got sick because of it. SubhanAllah. And you guys look up to these people. Like there's somebody to look up to. These people are filthy. And you see the people all over the chat. Some people, you see videos of people licking stuff, going into elevators and touching stuff and, you know, touching stuff at the subways. SubhanAllah. People are filthy. This is one of the problems of living amongst the kufar. They're filthy people and do filthy things. May Allah guide us and get, make this a motivation for us to get out of your country. Number, no, we're still at number seven. So, the Prophet of Islam, he mentioned in the dua, I mean, there's a hadith of the Prophet of Islam, he said, that's a mi'atu, bi arudin fala taqdamu alayhi wa idha waqa'a bi arudin wa antu biha fala taqruju firaran minhu. That the Prophet of Islam said, when you hear about a plague, now, here goes another thing. Many of the ulama, many of our scholars, this is Ibn Hajj and others, they say that this is not a plague, a ta'un is a specific disease. And some scholars say that this is not ta'un, this is not a plague, and it's not reality. The plague is a specific type of disease. But can we make qiyas with this and this? And that's what the ulama, some of the ulama do, that they make qiyas. That if there's a harmful disease somewhere, don't go to it. Even though we don't say that this is the ta'un, a plague, because the plague is a specific type of disease. A plague, plague, ta'un, a specific type of disease. It's not what everyone is running around saying, oh, this is ta'un, no, no. The real ta'un, when they come, you'll know. Ta'un, plague. Huh? Oh, what is qiyas? Oh, I'm sorry. Qiyas is a ruling, and something that happens in Islamic law. We say normally that the rules in Islamic law come from what? The book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, right? As well, there's another thing that we use in Islamic law that's called qiyas. Qiyas is when there's no known ruling for a certain thing, right? But there is a ruling for something that shares in its... It, there's an illa. The, the reason behind this ruling shares with this new thing that the Prophet Muhammad never spoke about. So an example would be is... Uh, can somebody say is, is heroin haram? Is heroin haram? Why? Okay, what's your proof? The proof that, I mean, that's true, but the proof that people say that it's an intoxicant. How does they say it's an intoxicant? Because it shares the same ruling as khamar. That khamar, what? It causes your mind to go away when you use it and you become delusional. The same thing that heroin does. So the reason that khamar is haram, heroin has that same effect. That's called qiyas. So there's no ruling in the shri'a about heroin. But we utilize the ruling for khamar, which is alcohol, 
that has a ruling in the Sharia, and we base the ruling on that onto that. Does that make sense? That's Qiyas. We, we don't have a known ruling for something, but we use this ruling that we do have something known for that shares in the illa, or it shares the reason behind this being haram or halal, they share it. So we use this to show that this is halal or haram based on that thing. And this rules around to it. That's just a, a quick summary of what I can say for it. you. So some scholars that make Qiyas have said, okay, listen, this is not the actual ta'un, but it's an infectious disease or looks like an infectious disease. Plague is a specific disease. Plague is a specific disease. What is what disease is it? It's a weird word. I don't remember what it is. I don't remember what it is. But the plague, huh? Bubonic plague? I don't. I don't know. I don't. Bubonic, I don't know. I'm telling you, I don't know. You can tell, but I don't. I don't know. It's a word. I remember the sheikh mentioning it to us in a class. On the, so I actually we had a class about this maybe like three months ago when we were um, in the um, Jamia Tirmidhi when we when the sheikh was explaining the Jamia uh, Tirmidhi and we came across this hadith. So, and I remember from this that we, you know, that's not the plague. The plague is a specific disease. When the actual plague comes, when you hear about the plague that happens at the time of the Sahaba and stuff, they were talking about 20,000 people dying in one day. Do you get that? It's a big difference. It's not the plague. Stuff like that. Talking about 2,000 people dying in one day. 20,000 people dying in one day. They haven't even reached 4,000 people in months all over the world. It's not the plague. They want to make you afraid. I'll tell you. Um, but still in all, you don't go to places where there's sickness at. As well, the Prophet said, لا يورد ممرد على المصح That the sick should not be mixed with the healthy. So if you notice someone is sick or you're sick, don't come around to protect us all. I'm still on seven. As well, the Prophet said, لا ولا No one should cause anyone harm and there shouldn't be any reciprocating of harm. What does reciprocating of harm mean? Well, I don't know, I shouldn't harm you, and we shouldn't harm each other. That's what la dora la dora means. That I shouldn't harm you, and we shouldn't harm each other. We shouldn't be in a thing where, yo, that tick protect thing, I'm gonna punch you, I'm punch you back, or I'm gonna do something to you, and you do something to me. No, Muslims, we, we don't harm each other. Tell you, that was number eight, seven, eight, seven, seven. seven. Now what? Stay away from where there's sickness at. And if you're sick, stay away from the healthy people. Simple. Number eight, do a lot of good. Do a lot of good. And try to do it, do a lot of good. As the Prophet said, Ibn al-Qayyim said, وَمِنْ أَعْضَمَ الْإِلَاجَاتِ الْمَرَضِ فِعْلُ الْخَيْرِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَالْذِكْرُ وَالْدُعَاءِ وَتَضَرُّعُ وَالْإِبْتِحَانُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالتَّوْبَةِ Number eight, do a lot of good. 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 Do and to make dhikr and dua and to be humble to Allah and to return back to Allah and making tawbah. That's one of the greatest ways of, of, of curing yourself from diseases is to help, is to do, to do good deeds. Is to do good deeds. Number nine is qiyam al Make qiyam al Bilal radiallahu anhu, he said, the Messenger of Allah said, Salaam alaykum qiyam al The Prophet said, make qiyam al layl fa'innahu da'b al-salihin It is the custom of the the righteous people before you. Wa'inna qiyam al layl qurbatun ila Allah And indeed, qiyam al layl is a way to get close to Allah. Wa'man hatu an al-ithm And it protects you or stops you from committing sins. Wa'takfir on al-sayyi'at And it removes the sins that you committed. And last, he said, And it repels, And it pushes away, runs away, diseases from the body. So who's scared of coronavirus? You better be up tonight praying for Yamale. You scared of it? You better be up praying for Yamale. Huh? Is what? What'd she say? What'd she say? An odd number of Mount Camelet? 
It ends with an odd number amount, yes. It starts, it start, the Kiyama lit, that's Witcher that makes it odd. The Kiyama is actually two, 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 two. Then you make Witcher two, I mean, one, three, five, like that, to make it odd. Witcher can be five. But Kiyama Leil is with Maturada Tun, the Dai, and the Jesse. The Kiyama Leil, it removes the disease from the body. It prevents the disease from coming to the body. Prevents the disease from coming to the body. Number 10. Wow, pay attention to this. Especially for you people that like to eat at night. You guys like to eat, go open up your mother, cook that morning or something. Or at night, and you going in the pot all night and everything. You know, you got to stay up not eating. They stay up to eat, right? Or if you just if you're cooking, when the prophet said something said the last one, very practical. <laughs> Covering up the pots, the cooking vessels, and tying up the water, like you know, we don't have water vessels, we tie up now. But you know, put the bottle top back on before you don't leave the bottle top open, right? And then you want to drink it in the morning. The Prophet Sallallahu said, covering up your cooking pot. You cook, don't leave the pot off, the top off of it. You got water that you want to drink or juice or whatever it is, cover it up. Don't leave it open, right? It's nasty, one. And two, it's one reason that diseases come to people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu said, cover up your, best, your, 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 your pots and pans, right? Cover them up. And tie up, with, you know, and put a top or a cover. What is this thing called? Bottle cap? They used to have their water vessels to be like leather. So they would take the leather skins, like the skins of animals, and then they would tie them up. They would put water in it, and then they would tie it with like a, you know, string or whatever to keep it from being open from things, the stuff going in. So the Prophet said, cover it up and tie those up. So in our situation, if you got a drink or something, cover your drinking stuff, right? He said, because every year there's a night. Every year there's a night that comes that the wabat, the sicknesses and disease that descends from the sky. Allah sends it down. And it doesn't pass by any open drink, any pots that are open with the lids off. It doesn't pass by any drinking thing that doesn't have a top on it. Except that it goes inside of that. The disease goes inside of those things. And people pass it on. That's one of the things you have to realize, huh? Put the top on it still. Even if it's in the fridge. Does it hurt you to put the top on it? Oh, I mean, of course, if it's in the fridge, it probably won't. But it's still not clean. If it's in the fridge, put some plastic wrap over it, some aluminum. For, if you can't find a top, cover it. Put a plate on it. Whatever you gotta do, but cover it. Especially you women, you cooking and stuff, right? And then you feed it to your brothers and your father and stuff later on. You give them what back? You feed them stuff that ain't been covered, right? That's dangerous. You know, so you gotta be careful. Don't do it. You feed it to them and stuff like that. They eat and they think that their sister, their wife, their mother made them a good meal, and they sick now. Oh, what happened? Yeah, because, you know, take care of it. It's upon you. To make sure you feed your families the most healthy stuff. If you feed them, feed them the healthy stuff. That won't get them sick. Ta'ib, hada wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihandik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta staffari wa tubu ilayk. Are there any questions? Uh, I actually liked it, but I'll give it to you. Thank you. I like pins. Jazakumullah khair. No, say it's a gift. I don't take so. It's a gift. Sorry. Anyone, any questions about anything? Sorry. So, um, just like... Okay, here you can stop this. Listen, who signed up for the book thing for the reading of Ibn Kathir? I know, but who are those 10 people? 